Hello, Randy Rain here, and I got a couple of Magic Mike 2s. What a stupid name for a robot. So I'm turning them into a Tommy Atomics. This is... Randy Robot Garage. So here's an original Tommy Atomic. This one is from the late 70s. It's a bump and go robot that has a little record player in it, just like this one, that plays a sounds and talking of a robot. Then in the 80s, they put out this one. It's the exact same body, same mechanism, except they changed the head. And in the head, they added a little smoke machine. That's the only difference. Then you had a magic mic, which was the exact same thing as this one, but the sticker is different. Then you had the magic mic 2s. Now the magic mic 2s were the exact same thing as the magic mics, except they left out the record player. So back in the day, these things were in all kinds of stuff. There was a thing called a laugh bag or a bag of laughs. You know, just a bag had one of these in there, and this thing had a laugh track on there, and it would just laugh at you. Now, they still make those, but it's digital. It's, they don't have these in there. There's also a little faces that you hung on the wall, and you pulled the tie, and it squirt water at you and laughed. One of these were in there. So... I tried to find some of these, but I could not find these. This one came from a robot that was just way too gone to fix, and so I just kept all the parts from it. But I tried to find some, and I just couldn't. They weren't anywhere, but that's just in the U.S. In other countries, they're all over the place. So my friend from Greece sent me this one. No idea what this one says. It could be in Greece for all I know, but he said they're in dolls in Greece, so he sent me that one. And a while back, I did a video where I made a mold of the record, which is right here, and I cast the record, and it worked. So, I'm going to cast some records, put them in this one, this one already has one, and then I'm going to put them into here and make them work, and fix these, redo the sticker, and turn these Magic Mike 2s into Tommy Atomics, because Magic Mike 2s are just dumb. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is take this apart. Now this little piece right here is what activates it, and these are broken. This is one I made, 3D printed out, and it's already broken. So I need to do something about fixing those, but it still works. You can see what this thing does right here. You can see it's already broken, so I need to work something out better than this thing. 3D printed material just isn't good enough. So all that thing does is lift this up right here. Just lifts it up and it allows the needle to go back to the beginning. That's all it does. Okay, so you can see it works pretty well. Just need to rebuild the little thing. So now let's have a look at this one. I can see it's different up here, but they are the same because you can see, get the light just right there. You can see it's called an Ozen. And you have the Japanese patents here. Then this one, Ozen, Japanese patents. And see whoever had this one didn't put it back right, so I'm going to start here. Oh, look at that. It's a little bit different. Got a very, that's just a rubber band. <laughs> Have a clear record that's fallen off. Okay. Well, let's see what's inside. Yeah, the little tensioner's not even on. Yeah, see this one, you put batteries in here. Okay, I don't need that. Get that away. There's the diaphragm. Okay. Some sort of potentiometer or something built into this. 
That's bizarre. Look at these side by side. Okay, there are differences. I'm not sure what's going on here. Obviously, this is why this thing is just a different piece. Because some of them have that for the battery. This is the same. This one has this thing on there. This one has cutoff switches. So basically, as it goes, it kills itself right here. And it also makes the robot stop and go. You know, before I start changing this into this, I'm going to put this record into here and let's see what it says. I don't know what's supposed to what actually stop this thing. Ah, I see. This one has a peg going in. This one's made for a peg coming out. Okay, so I'm just going to take some clay. I'll just put some clay in here. Okay, that'll, that should hold it long enough to turn. Well, that's annoying, huh? Alright, well, that's the answer. There's, it's a baby sound. So I guess the thing to do is to start taking this apart. And I can see there is some other differences too. This piece comes out. Where it's all one solid piece on the other one. No idea what that was supposed to do. That can go as well. Okay, I need this piece because this one's not right. It needs these little slots here, not one big slot with the wire on it. So I'm going to make this. And I don't need these bumps back here. That Those don't do anything for this. So I am just going to embed this into some clay. Okay, you can see how this works. You have red, green, and blue wires here. Now this is going to positive, and this green is going to ground. And so if you look, the red comes in and is going to one side of the motor. So one side of the motor is getting positive. Green, the negative, is coming down here. It's going into this little brass bar, and it's being connected right here. Ground is coming up here to the yellow, and it's going to the other side of the motor. So that turns the motor on, and so it starts playing the record. I am the atomic powered robot. Please give my best wishes to everybody. And then it clicks here and disconnects here. So now the negative is coming in. It's not going to here. It's now connecting here, and it's coming out the blue to here which goes to the motor on the robot. So the robot turns on and it, it gets stuck right here. So this gets stuck right here and the robot starts moving around until you push the button again on the top. Pushing the button on the top lifts the diaphragm, which allows this to spring back, which disconnects this, stopping the robot, which connects this, which now puts electricity negative part to the motor, and it starts playing again until it does the thing. So that's what I have to recreate on this one. Okay, I got me a wire soldered on here. So I need to attach it. 
somewhere like that. Okay, so I've got a black wire on this one. It's going to go in, I don't know, something like that, maybe. Okay, so I got this piece. Maybe I can glue it in like that. So now I need to work on the record. This one works a little different, so it doesn't need this little peg sticking out. And this one needs a little indention in. Alright, I'm having a really hard time with this. This is the piece that goes like that. This is the one I 3D printed. And this is what the original looked like, except it was made out of nylon. And so you're supposed to push this. And what it did was this little wedge lifted this up. And when that lifted up, it allowed the arm to go back. The spring on that is not enough to push it back. It's going to get stuck. So I'm thinking about adding a spring back here. Alright, here it is. Here's my contraption. I've got the little spring here. A little 3D printed piece here to stop the spring. Then push. Alright, here's the other one. Have this one replaced as well. Alright, which one to start with? Now I have to get this off. And take this out. And pop this gear and take this whole thing out. So there is a crack forming. Can you see it there? So that one gear is an eight tooth gear, but it also has that little lip on it. And that lip keeps this whole thing in place. If it didn't have it there, and that was just a solid gear all the way across, this would slide right out. Oh yeah. And I think I got that gear. It's really close. So this is the one that came off the black robot. And this is my spare. I want to use this body because it has the extra piece here and good tabs but this one has a broken tab but this door is broken so this one is missing the piece so I want to just add the piece to this one and use this door but this body but I want to take this gold one and with this door and use this door, replace it with this, so I can, I just need to start on this gold one. That's all there is to it. Boom, crack. So you can see that gear's cracked. So I 3D printed out some wheels, and I do them in halves so that they come out nicer. 
and then I just glue them together. And so now I take some O-rings Okay, I have to pretty much take these all off. Got to get that one off to replace it. Got to get that one off to put it on here. Got to get this one off to add the piece onto it and clean it up. So, Grimmel. Okay, so this one looks good. It'll that's going to connect to here. So now this one going to need a place to connect to here. So guess what? One of these is broken and I don't have a replacement for this. And this project's turning out to be a lot more work than I planned for it to be. So I have to make a mold of this one. Neither one of these smoke machines work. One of these worked for a little while. It did puff out and I could see a little glow down inside there, but then it burned out. Uh, okay, well, that's pretty much one side has the gauzing. And the other one just has the webbing here, whatever you want to call it. Interesting. Okay, here is one of these filaments for the little smoke generator that's still good. The only thing wrong with this one is the wires connecting to it broke off. But the actual little filament is still there. This is 36 gauge nichrome wire. It is a very, very fine wire. And I think I can make a filament out of this. It's what it's for. And I think it's thin enough for the batteries. So I have a piece of wire. And I have this little tiny drill bit here. I'm going to wrap it around this drill bit. There we go. That's a pretty good glow. Not burning out, but glowing. Okay, so the filament needs to be somewhere around that size. I'm going to try twisting it. And then just trapping it in there with the solder. Okay, so now I need to get it into here. Maybe I can poke it in one side here in this little notch. Just go ahead and glue it in. I guess I better test it in place. I think that'll work. Okay, now to glue it back. Okay, I'm going to put a couple of drops of oil down in here to make sure it's nice and wet. That there is oil getting to the filament. And I'm going to give it a shot here. <laughs> that works great. Awesome. I just repaired a smoke machine. So I should have enough parts to Frankenstein two magic mics into two Atomi Atomics. Here we go. Okay, I've checked the light bulbs. They work. So one's going to go in here, that goes in like that, and now the smoke machine, then this, and I think I decided to put black on him, there we go. 
gas. So now it's all wired up. So basically what it is, is the record player gets one and a half volts positive and then it gets negative all the time. And so as long as the record has played and it's pushed that switch inside, negative is disconnected from the motor so it stops and a negative then goes to the rest of everything else. So everything else gets negative on one side and then as soon as you turn the switch on everything gets positive on there. So now the lights are lighting up, the smoke machine is going, and the motor is going. So as soon as you push the button on top of the head for the record player it kills the negative to all that so that turns off it gives it to the motor so it turns on it plays the record until it gets to that switch and then it kills it turns this back on and so forth and you can always play the record player whether this switch for the power is on or not okay so now I need to put this little hammer in here Uh, so before I put these screws in, I guess I should test them, right? It's in power. See the smoke? Awesome. I gotta put the thing on, but we're going down here. So I'm almost done, but the guys at New Bright Robotics Industry back in the 80s thought it'd be a good idea to put this little thin piece of plastic antenna on here so that just about every one of them breaks off. So why would they make something so stupid? Since I can't just mix up a tiny little bit I'm making some robots as well. And I also cut a slit in it. So I'm having a hard time getting them out. Plus that makes it less bubbles. I painted some of these gold with this stuff. That looks pretty good. Well, there you have it. That's how you change some Magic Mike 2s into some Tommy Atomics. Piece of cake. All you do is rebuild the wiring in a record player, change out a few gears, rewire the filament in the smoke machine, mold and cast some plastic parts and Bob's your uncle. But of course you want to see them work. So they both have batteries in and the gold one has an original recorder in it. The black one has the one that I rebuilt. It does work, that's for sure. And when I turn them on, And look at the smoke.
So it seems like people like it when I sell these robots. So I'm going to sell these Frankensteins as well. You can find a link for them on eBay in the description. So that's about it. If you like this video, please give me a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and subscribe. I want to thank these people right here. These are patrons. These are people helping me out. If you'd like to become a patron, of course, there is a link below. So while I was fixing these, I made some of these little robots. And these are some of the gifts that the patrons are going to get this month. So yeah, consider becoming a patron. Anyway, that was... Frankie Robot Garage!